Well, in the meantime, investors are skeptical about the earnings power of the New York Times. It's the worst performing newspaper stock this year. But will today's earnings be a game changer? Suzanne O'Halloran is looking into it. Suzanne. Well, thanks, Dieter. You know, analysts say the economy is getting less bad, and if so, that could be good news for the Times. But they're more worried about how CEO Arthur Sulzberger is going to fend off a big rival. That's Rupert Murdoch of News Corp. But first, let's talk about what Sulzberger is doing in the meantime. He's hoping, finally, to try to make some money using technology, but he's really heavily betting on a relationship with Apple. He's going to let some of the customers uh, have a free application so they can use content on the New York Times and see it for now, but he plans to potentially charge for the content down the road. Also, just yesterday, uh, they did roll out a new app for the iPhone. This actually is uh, going to be be uh, tied to a calorie counter, which essentially the idea here is to attract big advertisers with deep pockets like Kraft and P&G. But the bigger issue, as I mentioned, may be Rupert Murdoch. First of all, Rupert Murdoch, owner of the Wall Street Journal, is actually taking a swipe at the New York Times. He's going to be rolling out a local business section, really going after the bread and butter of the New York Times. And as we know, Deirdre, he is a fierce competitor. And the New York Times uh, say some analysts uh, should be a little bit worried about this. This is going to be rolling out very shortly. Now, this could be uh, these issues rather really uh, impacting the stocks. As you can see, the New York Times is up just 3% this year, underperforming the market. More than that, look at the rivals. Gannett, owner of USA Today, up 24%. Washington Post, up nearly the same amount. So, a lot of challenges for the New York Times. Deirdre? All right, Suzanne, and I mean, there's some uh, more data out there about investors perhaps getting details about the partial sale of the Boston Red Sox. I know I shouldn't really ask you that, right? As a Massachusetts native, <laughs> that's right. Why you did probably they sell have a loaded it, right? agenda here, Full right? Full disclosure, I am from Boston, but that's right. They did uh, potentially, in my eyes, maybe not the greatest decision, but hey, they need the money. They did uh, sell a partial stake earlier this month. They told investors they're not going to disclose what they're going to net from that sale till they release second quarter earnings. Later this morning, we'll be getting first quarter earnings. However, here's the issue. Analysts say, even though the Red Sox are a marquee franchise, that they're really probably at best worth about $200 million, especially when they did the sale. We know credit's hard to get. The New York Times has debt of about $700 million over that, actually. So even if it is at the high end, Deirdre, it's just going to barely make a dent in their long-term debt. So we'll see. Back to you. All right, Suzanne. Thanks very much, Suzanne O'Halloran there on the New York Times. Well